Once sports betting became legalized, the floodgates opened. Casinos are now seeing record profits. Billions of dollars are pouring into the sports books. People want action. The industry of selling picks has always existed. With social media, this hustle has blown up. Today, we're going to analyze someone making a million dollars a year selling picks. I enjoy the Money Buys Happiness podcast as I've listened to a few of their episodes. They had a sports better named RJ Betts as a guest recently. I've seen my friend turn like 50 bucks to like eight hundred dollars back then it was mm. like whoa yeah yeah we need that parlays are as enticing as fast food advertisements on the tv when you're hungry but they're fool's gold i put 300 i said instead of putting this in my gas tank i'm gonna sit at home and put this in bet 365 <laughs> i did a parlay <laughs> i think it was a 16 player prop parlay it's 300 dollars to forty three thousand dollars Oh. The casinos love these bets because there's a 0% chance of winning them long term and they seduce every square better because of the idea that you'll get rich quick if you just get lucky once. And over three days, I think I remember it was a Friday. By Sunday, it was 170000 in my bet five <laughs> account. Yo, relax, bro. $300 became $170,000 in a week. Seems implausible, but I have no reason not to believe him. He got insanely lucky if it's true. Let me tell you why casinos love parlays. UNLV Center for Gaming Research released this chart last year on how profitable the casinos are by sport. Parlays are around five times more profitable than the three major sports. The average casino win percentage on parlays since 1992 is 30.92%. What that means is that for every one $100 bet on a parlay, the casino keeps around $31. If you ever want to lose around 20 to 30% of your money over time, bet on parlays. Every okay. first quarter, would hit the under. Okay. Under. So uh, basically, me and him found a glitch in the system of yeah. Yeah. five. Yeah. Where we would wait till two minutes to go and hit the unders. Yeah. That's it would fun. always cash. This is the part where I believe he had an edge against the books. That's the talk of someone with an edge. This was the most believable segment. It sounds like this was how he jumped to 170K in a weekend and not on parlays. Instead of you guys buying sports picks to place at a casino, I have an idea for you. If you're someone looking to level up in life, reading books and consuming important life lessons are critical. Blinkist makes it super easy for you by condensing long books into easily digestible blinks, which are essentially the key ideas you need to know. I believe a lot of people people don't read books because of how time intensive they can be. Blinkist allows you to understand the key elements of any book or podcast in under 15 minutes, which is why I recommend adding it to your daily routine. Within just a day, I was able to learn all the key elements from the book, The Power of Habit, which has led to better life-changing habits in my daily routine, like going for a walk right after waking up. Blinkist Connect allows every Blinkist premium plan to be shared by two different accounts. It's no additional cost to you, and it's free to the person you invite as long as you're sharing it with them. You can get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one today. Start your seven-day free trial today by clicking the link in the description. Back to the video. There is those glitches, though, when it comes to, like, those, those, like, rare leagues that no, one, that no one's them, watching it. Like, or those semi-pro leagues or those leagues. This is one way that sharps can beat the books, constantly finding temporary edges against the books. Casinos always have the edge against their customers, meaning their games are rigged to win in their favor. Finding an edge means you rig the game in your favor, essentially. On IG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you're showing yeah. everything. Okay, right. so that... Okay, so, so you said you went viral, though. Your IG prior to this happening... 3,000 followers to, like, 15K <laughs> one day. Just Not even. The, just Literally like 10 hours just from that Jeez. slip. If any of you want to get rich in 2023, show winning sports betting slips on social media and people will be in your inbox faster than a Mr. Beast style giveaway. There's a lot of scammers now because of obviously what the... Yeah, the money's Make there, it a lot right? of money, right? When you put money, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, the sports betting picks industry is the next massive fake guru hustle. I've already uncovered a lot of them, but it's like playing whack a fake guru mole. Is RJ Betts scamming? The answer is no. In the literal sense of the definition, sports betting fake gurus aren't scammers because they give you their picks. The problem, in my eyes, is that none of them are winning sports bettors. Like, I think it was like 60 people to sign up. My mind was blown once I realized how many young dudes are desperate gamblers buying picks from anyone who gives them hope that their picks will turn water into wine. Yeah, of course. I paid him $200 to post me that time. Okay. okay. And bro, two hundred dollars for the post. Okay. And that same day, I made nine thousand dollars from signups. That's what blew me up. If you guys want to make money in 2023, the best business to start is selling picks. Pay for a shout out in some reputable news source and watch the dough flow in. That ROI he had was insane. Finally, I did triple the numbers because uh, their maximum post is three hundred. Okay. So then I would 
I would instead of charging fifty dollars a pick, I would charge one hundred fifty for a pick. The best in the world have around a three percent edge against the books. Okay, remember that. Let's break down the minimum needed for RJ Betts' customers just to break even for his picks. If RJ Betts is a member in the upper echelon of sports bettors, he's not, but let's assume he is, his customers would need to be betting $5,000 a game to break even because they need to profit $150 per game over time to pay for the picks. I hope you're following. Assuming his customers are also taught the value of professional bankroll management and are only betting around 5% of their bankroll per game, they would need a starting bankroll of $100,000 just to break even. How do you make, like, the person has to know at the beginning that there is a risk in buying the pick to begin with. Not really. No? People don't really... They don't see it that way. They think this should be a lock. This should be a guarantee. People like us know what gambling is. Yeah. Yeah. Casinos have a house edge against the betters. People have heard this cliche before, but I still believe many don't know what it really means. Sports books for squares like BetMGM or anything William Hill maintain around a 6 to 9% hold on their books, meaning for every $100 bet by a customer, the book will keep a $6 to $9 profit. Meaning the customer will put $100 into the Get Rich Quick machine and walk away with around $92 over time. Use it as a free play chat. Okay. To, to draw everybody there. All the Sick. eyes are there. Sick. So now I get, I have, I think, 10,000 subscribers in there. Yeah, that's wow. crazy. That's crazy. That's- I appreciate the podcast host for asking the questions and for RJ talking about the numbers. I'm not shocked that he has that many. Now that sports gambling is legalized, the amount of people gambling is astronomical and they'll flock to anyone claiming to have winners. I seen like your fans, Lee, you posted like your monthly earnings was like over a hundred grand. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. People copy pics. I'm telling everyone, it's the best business model in 2023. I think RJ only has one person on his team, and he's clearing seven figures a year. We'll continue analyzing, but I don't think he's a winning sports better either. Like, where you're giving these picks out, you're selling these picks, you're winning big, and you're like, all right, maybe this is this is more about skill than luck, or maybe I'm just lucky with some skill. Like, was that like... I would say it's skill. I can't say it's not skill. I can't. Yeah, I can't. A lot of people like. In order to evaluate if he's a skilled better, you'll need to evaluate how his picks compare with the closing line. Beating the closing line means his picks are better than where the line is at when the game starts. If the picks he sends is home team minus three, then constantly seeing the closing line at minus three and a half, minus four, minus five, etc., means he's closing good. That determines skill. Like research and, like. It's out there, like you could literally see the edge on any bet. Yeah. Like, what's the percent of the edge? I don't know if I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because if he found a legitimate tool, then there's a chance he's at least semi decent at making picks. Like if you get that tool, I have a tool that I use. This is my guess on how he sells his picks because I have very little belief he has an edge on the books himself. Not a single legitimate sports better in the world flashes jewelry publicly, so RJ in this post standing on top of a sink doesn't strike me as someone that spends days analyzing sports betting lines. And they certainly don't stand on nice cars for social media likes. And that doesn't know the edge. Maybe give him a, like a little breakdown of that. Hmm, that's hard, man. Uh, I'd say the edge is like... This is not an exposed video, but I think his answer is pretty indicative of someone who isn't a winning sports better. This is the easiest question to answer for anyone in the business. If you want to see how someone legitimate answers questions like this, I purposefully did a video with Dave Miller and a betting syndicate so everyone can see how legitimate sports bettors answer questions. The probability of percentage of how well that bet is going to is gonna cash, I think that's yeah. what I learned about it. That's my... Having an edge means the probability of your wager winning is greater than the odds you receive. It's the most important element to sports betting. I lost 460000 One shot? On the Lakers. Oh, oh on your boy, see? Jeez. But it's okay. Cause Was it a straight bet? Yeah, straight bet. Anyone who is able to place that large of a bet on a single game is not a winning sports better. It's an irrefutable fact. I have discussed this matter with people very prominent in this industry, and I can say that losing $500,000 from a single bet means you are not a winner. I commented that being able to put down $500,000 on a straight bet is the easiest tell that someone isn't a winner at the books. They responded saying, also an easy way to tell he's confident in his bets. 
I think the hosts did a great job with the podcast, and I'm not expecting them to understand the complicated math behind sports betting, but this isn't up for debate. You might respond saying, Spencer, the video you did with the betting syndicate makes you look like a hypocrite because you say those guys bet multiple six figures a game. That's because they are banned and have to put down a thousand bucks across 500 different accounts using complicated software. Since I do not know RJ, I don't know exactly what bet he placed. However, I'm just trying to protect you all from the misleading marketing by sports bettors on social media that is so prevalent today when when they say they win hundreds of thousands of dollars at the sports books, they don't. That's why I made this video with Dave Miller in Colorado showing you how quickly a good better can be banned, even with placing a maximum of two or three thousand dollars a game. I, I lost on the Conor McGregor fight. It's just loss. That was half a million. I couldn't imagine losing that in one night. I would love to see his full casino statements to prove if he's a winning or losing sports better, because anyone placing a single bet for half a million in a casino in the history of the world is a losing better long term. Let's say when it comes to the research that's being done, like what's an easy way that they can tap into that research and, and try to do it themselves? You got to know what. Again, you gotta know what your probability is of this bet to cash. Mm -hmm. I do like his answer here. The only way to become a legitimate winning better is to understand probabilities and how to beat lines from a mathematical perspective. Pro sports bettors don't watch games. They don't care about the names on the back of the jerseys. They don't worry about outcomes. They are essentially day traders. As long as they place bets with a positive expected value long-term, they are good. What's been like the revenue you've done uh, off of those like if, if you can put a number on it yeah 2021 i think i did 1.4 2022 i did almost two so it was like 1.85 Plus, well, that's just the OnlyFans money. Yeah. I know for a fact RJ isn't a winning sports better on his own, meaning if he didn't have access to some tool, if he did find a tool that wins and he's able to make this much from his picks, then he found a great business model. To give you an idea of how valuable customers are to a casino, check out this ad on SI with the title, Bet365 promo code for new players. Bet $1, get $365 in bonuses instantly. That should give you an idea on how much they think you'll lose over time. They're willing to a acquire a customer for what is around $364 on top of the cost of the ad to be placed on a prominent sports website. The casinos are making record profits in 2023. I'd be a multi-millionaire if I could start my own casino and let sports betting gurus on social media bet half a million on Conor McGregor at my book. Thanks for watching.